Hey, hey, math people. So I was certainly in the probability mood today, and I figured what is a topic that students likely display misconceptions on, don't quite understand the first time around, said topic that I can add to the pool of math videos on YouTube. Uh, I figured that that was probably the addition rule. There are a lot of videos of the addition rule on YouTube, but uh, some of them are not quite as nicely made. Uh, on the idea of why is it so? <laughs> why, right? Why does it exist in the way it does? So what is the addition rule? The addition rule is this guy right here. Uh, so this is saying the probability of A or B. Uh, we can just say A is an event of liking apples and B is the event of liking bananas. Uh, what is the probability of liking apples or bananas? So this is liking at least one, apples or bananas. And if you happen to like both, then great. You like, you like one of them. Um, is equal to the probability of liking apples plus the probability of liking bananas and then you subtract off the probability of liking apples and bananas. Why? Why do we subtract off the intersection? That's weird. A lot of kids get huh like at this part of the game. It's very common for people to just say uh, well you just add up the probability of liking apples you add up the probability of liking bananas and that's it. That should get you just the probability of liking apples or bananas. No. Wrong. Incorrect. No. <laughs> You need to subtract off the intersection, and let me show you why. We need it, but we need to subtract off it. And it seems a little strange, but a Venn diagram is going to help us see and enlighten uh, us to why the addition rule is as such. Uh, okay, so I, I drew, um, drew an event space area where we got A, we have B. You know, you can like just apples, you can like apples and bananas, you can like just bananas, or you can like neither because you're a fruit lover. Fruitarian, non-fruit eater. Anyway, you get the idea. You can. It's, those are the only options, right? Uh, so when we're talking about this, how about we? How about we just break apart all three of these um, these little stipulations here? So the probability of liking apples that is just this circle, this whole 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 circle. It's it's this portion and this portion. Because if you like apples and bananas, then you like apples, right? So it's all this section inside here. Likewise, for probability of B, that just means you like bananas, and that's that circle B. Everything in B must be shaded in, highlighted. That includes this little sliver inside, this A and B section. So the problem is staring right at you. We have the probability of A plus the probability of B. We have an issue with what I just did here. I've shaded this little sliver, this, this A and B region, how many times? And you are just screaming the number two from home, but alas, I made this video hours, days, months even before you, you shouted two, so I can't hear you. But I know you said to, I shaded this region twice. I double counted the region. The probabilities overlap, so I can't do that. I need to subtract off one of the two shaded regions. So this last part, subtracting off the intersection, is to account for the fact that I counted it twice, I need to erase one of them. You'll now see that the event of liking A or B, this total probability here, is all just shaded in once. The only region that is not shaded in is the probability of, well, not liking either, right? Apples or bananas. Now there's no overlap, and now I'm accurately displaying that, that correct probability. I'm not double counting those that like both apples and bananas. You are not any more special than people that just like apples or people that just like bananas. Yeah, good for you. You like fruit. You're healthy. Whatever. You are not to be counted as an additional human being. This idea, this addition rule, can actually be applied um, to not just two events, but more. Three, four, so on. How about we look at the case with three events to show you that this line of thought, this logic, um, is applicable to higher number of events. Uh, okay, so before I give the big reveal of this addition rule probability statement with three different events, um, Try to think of this on your own, because the in intuition that we just applied to two events is very similar to the intuition that we're going to apply here to three. So here again, we can just say A is that event of liking apples, 
uh, B, bananas, C, we can say cherries. Um, so for this stipulation to exist, you can like apples and bananas, you can like bananas and cherries, you can like cherries and apples, you can like just apples, just cherries, just bananas, or you can like all three. Uh, so let's start uh, doing a little bit of shading uh, so that we can naturally derive this, this formula, this equation. Um, so let's start off with the obvious ones. Let's just add up the probabilities of just liking apples, probability of liking bananas, probability of liking cherries. So uh, probability of just A plus the probability of just B plus the probability of just C and it would probably help to fill in those letters a bit. Okay, so once we do a little bit of shading with that, it should look a little like this. There, close enough. So I see like a ton of problems. I see that these three like triangle shapes, uh, they're all shaded in two times. And I see this centerpiece is shaded in three times. Uh, but these outer rings, well, you know, portions of these outer rings, these kind of like, I don't know, whatever the shape is, those are fine. Those are shaded in just once, that's what we wanted. So let's start subtracting off some of those subsections. We don't want this overlap, right? This we're trying to avoid similar to the case of just two events. So let's subtract off all three intersections, A and B, B and C, and then uh, A and C. So let's subtract off uh, A and B, A and C, and then uh, B and C now. Just double check to make sure we have every combination, looks good to me. Now we can erase uh, just one of the, the layers in each of those, um, each of those intersections. Uh, so for the intersection of A and B, I will erase uh, A. So I'm not going to be perfect here, but we're going to say that all of A is gone. Now, uh, for the intersection of A and C, I will erase C. So now you can see for the intersection of A and C that, that all that green coloring is gone. Uh, lastly, if we look at our last combination here, B and C, I'm going to erase all the blue coloring for that one. So now all the blue is gone. I understand that this is a little messy right now. Uh, this, was, this was not particularly fun on my end. Uh, but there's, a, there's another problem here. So not, not, in my, not in my racing. My racing is good. It's flawless. Uh, but there's another problem here mathematically. We went eraser happy and uh, we we erased a little too much. So we have this intersection of just A and B and not C. That's only shaded in once, good to go. Same thing here, A and C, not B, shaded in once, good to go. Uh, B and C, not A, shaded in once, again, good to go. Uh, but the, all three, the centerpiece has been erased too many times, or three many times. So now to accommodate for the fact that we erased it too many times, we now have to add it back in. So instead of subtracting, we are now adding the final probability. Now with the addition of uh, this last probability, all three probably of liking apples and bananas and cherries, um, I will now, I'll just use black here, for this inner piece, I will now shade in uh, this inner piece. And now finally, phew, it's, it's all shaded in once. We're good to go. This is the formula of the addition rule for three events. And now let's do four events. I'm joking, I definitely don't want to do that. I'm actually out of markers. My red, my red pen died. That is all I have for you. A little bit of intuition and insight on the uh, mentality and the rationale why of the addition rule. Uh, I hope you continue to math on and I will do the same. I'll see you in the next video.